Okay, well today um, I received the uh, limit switches uh, for the unit. Um, they are Hall Effect sensors, so they will detect whenever there's metal in front of the uh, probe there. And uh, I guess they're calibrated to know what distance it is from there and uh, throw a signal uh, off of that. So the way that this thing is set up, um, this is my master x-axis drive. Uh, so this would be the homing and limit switch in the negative direction. And then down here there is a uh, another limit switch in the um, plus x direction. And then on the slave axis or A axis in Mach 3 um, I have another limit switch and um, so this allows me to auto square the gantry so when I do a reference X home it will reference the, the master and the slave uh, axis independently um, and reference them to these uh, limit switches um, so it does alright uh, I did um, in the kit that I got uh, I received a uh, bad sensor it was showing that the limit was always on no matter what so I don't know what's going on with that but uh, Aaron said that he would uh, send me another one so I'll have a, uh, a Y plus sensor and I've got the wire run for that already and then I've got a Y minus home sensor uh, on this axis so um, they all plug right directly into the uh, bottom of the kit and they're fairly accurate uh, I did a few tests where I would try and home and then I would measure with my caliper across here and across here to see once what the difference was uh, for each homing cycle and generally I got within about a thousandth of an inch and that's about as good as I can measure by just doing that with home eventually I'll, I'll try and do a better test where I set up a dial indicator somewhere in a known position on the table and uh, after homing it I'll set it up and make the pr uh, put a, a probe just a maybe a piece of uh, straight piece of metal or something like that in the chuck and make it repeatedly uh, reference home and then come back and touch the sensor and I'll check that dial indicator um, to know how accurate these sensors really are but I think they're they're pretty good um, kinda have my questions as to whether they're as accurate as a laser diode uh, light sensor but uh, they seem to be doing alright so in Mach 3 I've set up <laughs> Uh, I set it up to reference at about 1% so all I have to do is drive these down here and um, get them close to the uh, limits and then uh, go to my ref all home and I wrote a little script a while ago that I can choose which axes I'm referencing um, and it'll do different things so if I choose both X and Y and hit OK it'll reference X first so you can see that both axes are moving and maybe alright so after it referenced that then it goes ahead and automatically does the Y axis it gets close and then backs off until the switch turns off so um, one thing I don't know is if, if that's the most appropriate way to use these sensors um, on, the, on the off uh, you know the back off side um, so it triggers it on and then backs off slowly, more slowly, until it triggers off. I don't know if that's appropriate for these Hall Effect sensors or not. Maybe that's something, a question I'll have to ask Aaron. But uh, they seem to do alright. Uh, this one seems to be slightly more accurate uh, than this one. But um, 
I don't know, it's really hard, you know, these aren't really exact, you know, precision surfaces here, so kind of depending on where I get my caliper on, I can get a little bit of difference on there, but, um, yeah, it seems to do alright. Um, so, on uh, that, I use my soft limits now, and just make sure that I, you know, I get about 50 inches of travel in the Y direction, and... I think I have it set to 97 and a half in the Y or in the X direction, so should be pretty good. Uh, I'm fairly happy with all that. So uh, the only thing left I, that I have to do is figure out a method to um, square the gantry, um, and then I will adjust this sensor forward or back to adjust how the gantry squares and that way it should square up automatically every time. Um, one method that I read about was using a dial indicator and a precision machinist square. Um, this is only six inches in length. I don't know if I can get a bigger one or not somewhere. Uh, but basically I would dial indicate along the bottom of this thing and adjust the square until the indicator read close to zero across the entire length and then look along the y-axis and indicate along there. Um, you know, I don't know how great that's going to be because it's only six inches of travel over, you know, 48 inch or, you know, 96 inch span. But, uh, you know, if I could do that to within a couple thousandths of an inch on there, that means that I would be, well, I guess the squareness would really run along the, the y-axis, so uh, out of six, so if I could get it within two thousandths of an inch, I would be within, um, you know, sixteen thousandths of an inch across the forty-eight inch span, so I guess it's not too bad, but, uh, maybe I can try and find a larger square and a good dial indicator, so we'll see, um, till next time. Uh, I'm just about ready to cut. You can see I've got my MDF pieces. I'm ready to make my bed. Um, I got my collets today from China. Well, actually from Hong Kong. Um, depends on who you ask if that's part of China or not. But uh, anyway, so I got the collets, collet sets. They're ready to go. I just need bits, and I am set to, to run. So anyway, till next time, see ya.